If you create a new slider component in Unity, you get this. In fact, there are multiple ways to format it. In this quick tutorial, you'll learn how to create a slider and how to get its values. Next, we'll move on to more advanced styling options and then finish off by getting rid of the handler and creating a nice loading bar. Let's go! So let's start with the basics. This is a simple screen with a label. The idea is that we'll get this value from the slider. To create it, right-click in your hierarchy and select UI Slider. Let's quickly position it properly. This is the default look of the slider. If we run the game, we can actually see that it works out of the box, but there are quite a few important properties we might want to look at. First one is a direction of our slider. For example, if we would like to create a slider like on audio interfaces, you can change it to bottom to top. That way, the highest values are on the top and the lowest on the bottom. In fact, you can see how the values change when I move it. Mean and max value is pretty self-explanatory and whole numbers transforms it into a step slider. If we change the max value to 5 and run the game with the whole numbers enabled, you can see that the slider basically jumps between those whole number values. Finally, the value field allows you to set the value on the game start. Now let's see how to get this value and how to display it in your game. First, we need to create a new script. Click Add Component, let's call it Slider Controller, and before opening the script, notice that we have one more field here in the slider settings, which is the on value changed action. This action will be triggered whenever a player changes the slider value. We surely need to use it. In the script, instead of the start and update methods, type public void on slider changed, open parentheses, float value, and open brackets. On the slider component, you may have noticed that the on value changed can actually pass a float with a new slider value to the set method. That's why the on slider changed method gets a float value as the new parameter. For this basic example, we'll set the value to the text component. At the very top, type using unityengine.ui so we can start working with the UI components and then declare the new variable public text value text. Finally, inside of a method, type value text, that text equals value that to string. Great, now let's save our script and assign all the fields. First, drag from the hierarchy the text component and then click on this small plus icon, dragging the newly created script and from the dropdown select slider controller on slider changed. Notice that we have two versions of the same method. In this case, we should use the one on the very top. This is the one that actually passes the value of the slider as we discussed before. Now, when we run the game, we can see that the text changes whenever we move the slider. Great. Okay, so now that we know how it works, Let's make it a little bit prettier. The slider has three elements that we can modify. Handle image, background, and field area. I designed a very simple slider in Sketch, which I would like to now transform into Unity. Let's start with the handle. Here I have a file with the right rectangle that I just imported into our project assets. Now in the hierarchy, unfold slider, handle slide area, and finally, click on this handle object. In the inspector, you'll find the image component where you can just change the sprite to a newly imported file. Sometimes it may look a bit stretched, in this case just resize the image. Much better. Next, fill area. This one will be a bit more interesting. I'd like to achieve this pattern with the stripes and rounded corners at the end. First, download this image and import it to Unity. Before moving on, in the inspector you need to change pixels per unit to 200 to make sure that it will be displayed properly. 
Then click Sprite Editor and by resizing the green box you will decide which area always has the same size and which one can be resized. If you like to learn more about this method, check out this video. Click Apply to save changes. Time to replace the actual image. We need to find Fill object in the slider, it should be under Fill area. You can easily check which one is it by changing its color, for example to orange. Finally, change the image to the newly imported Stripes Fill and then in the image type select Tiled. Now, as you can see, changing the slider value will also nicely update the size of our Stripes Fill image. Finally, a background, a component that stays behind the handler and the field area. In this case, the default image is pretty good. You may want to use it in your project, but I will replace it with an image that has rounded corners, created very similarly to the one shown a second before. That's it! A nicely styled slider with a colorful and eye-catching feeling. Of course, the possibilities are endless and here are just a few other examples of slider designs. You can download all of them and other source files by supporting me on Patreon. Link in the description. Ok, so we've used this slider to get a value from the player like the volume setting. But what if we'd like to give our player information without the ability to modify it? like spell casting progress bar or amount of health. In this duplicated slider, which will be our loading bar, I need to uncheck the interactive toggle. That way, player won't be able to change it and the only way to update its value is through a script. Also, as you can see, the slider handle changed transparency to indicate that it can't be moved. But here is another secret. The slider does not need to have a handle. You can just click on the object and remove it. Much better. Let's open the same slider controller script we've used before and create a new method that will be used to change the value of the slider. I'll just create a new variable at the very top that will hold the progress. Type int progress equals zero. We also need to create a slider reference which will come in handy in just a second. So type public slider slider. Remember that to work with slider components, we need to import Unity Engine.UI namespace. We already did it in this file. Then let's create a new method that will change the progress and update the slider value. Type public void update progress, open brackets, progress plus plus to add one to the progress variable. And finally, slider.value equals progress. That's it for coding. Now let's go back to Unity and make sure to link the slider to the slider field in the slider component script. Then here on the button, let's register a new onClick event by dragging in the slider component and on the dropdown selection, choose slider controller update progress. Now time to test out our second creation. Run the game and press the button. As you can see, everything works and our progress bar is gradually filling in. Of course, nothing stops you from creating a second button and a simple method to decrease the slider on each click. By adding a small heart image and changing the color to red, we just created a health bar. Same as before, nothing stops us from creating and coming up with other great designs and use cases for our sliders. So that's it! Thanks a lot to my awesome patrons that support this channel. Be sure to check out my other videos about Unity UI and Unity Basics. See you soon!